There were five mafia families in New York. Each family has a deep background with organized crime in the U.S. While all five families, the Bonanno, Gambino, Genovese, Lucchese, and Colombo are still operating, they don't have the same reign of power that previous bosses held. While mafia families of 2024 may not be as powerful as they were in the 20th century, they still hold a lot of influence. In this video, we'll highlight who is running these notorious families today. We're going to take a look at who they are and how they climbed the ranks to mafia boss status. Stay tuned for a deep dive into the most dangerous mob bosses of 2024. Michael the Nose Mancuso is the head of the Bonanno family. He has been in charge for a decade, but has also been tangled up in his fair share of legal problems. His current charges could make it challenging for him to control the power. The Nose is no stranger to legal trouble. He has been cycling in and out of prison for the majority of his mafia career. Before joining the Bonanno family, he was involved with the East Harlem Purple Gang. In 1984, he fatally shot his wife and served a 10-year sentence after pleading guilty to manslaughter. It isn't publicly known the exact date when Michael Mancuso joined the Bonanno family. However, it is known that he was promoted to underboss in 2004 by the acting boss, Vincent Basciano, but it wasn't long before he was sent back to prison. Under the acting boss's command, the Nose ordered for the 2004 murder of Randolph Pizzolo. The Nose was arrested in 2006, and in 2008, he was sentenced to 15 years in prison. In 2013, Michael Mancuso was promoted to the head of the family even though he was still behind bars. Now, it hasn't been clear to the public why things changed for the Bonanno family, but the previous boss, Vincent Basciano, was sentenced to life in prison in 2011 for racketeering and murder charges. By March 2019, the Nose was finally released from prison, but with his release also came strict conditions that he was expected to follow. He was on supervised release and was not allowed to associate with members of organized crime. On October 24, 2020, a conversation with Colombo member Michael Irvino was tapped. At first, it seemed innocent, but Michael Mancuso was known to use code in his past conversations with Mafia members. Mancuso, are you going to do the gravy today or make the sauce? Irvino, no, I'm making it in the morning because we're not going to eat early. What time do you want to eat tomorrow? Mancuso, I don't care, 5 o'clock or so. This conversation may have come off sounding like two friends making dinner plans, but it was all the authorities needed to zone back in on the nose. It was proof that he was still associating with Mafia members. Authorities also discovered that his girlfriend owned an eyeglass shop, and the nose was using this shop to communicate with mob associates. He was eventually arrested for violating the terms of his release. He was sentenced to serve an additional 11 months in prison on July 28, 2023. Domenico Cefalo is the current boss of the Gambino family. He took over this role in 2011 when his former boss, Peter Gotti, was serving a life sentence. Domenico was born in Sicily in 1947, making him the oldest crime boss on our list today. Domenico got involved with the Gambino family after moving to the U.S. through drug trafficking. In 1982, he was arrested for heroin smuggling along with 10 others. He served six years in prison and continued working with the Gambino family when he was released. In 1990, former boss John Gotti made Domenico an official member of the Gambino family. This crime boss had been loyal to the Gambino family since the very beginning. He proved this in the early 1990s when there was an investigation into Gambino captain Pasquale Conte, and he refused to testify. Refusing to speak landed him behind bars for 33 months, but it also showed the family that he was someone they could trust. In 2005, Jackie D'Amico, who was John Gotti's former ally, named Domenico Cefalu as the Gambino family's underboss. With this new title, he was also responsible for overseeing the Sicilian faction of the organization. John Gotti was the most famous boss of the Gambino family. He was known for being flamboyant and dangerous. He drew a lot of attention to himself and represented a huge change in the Mafia. His brother, Peter Gotti, was his successor after John Gotti received a life sentence. He was nicknamed the Dumbest Don, and even his own brother doubted his ability to run an organized crime family. In 2011, Domenico Cefalu took over the role of crime boss when the Dumbest Don was sent to prison. This marked a big change in leadership for the Gambino family. Domenico was known as a stand-up guy who kept a low profile. His leadership style was similar to old-fashioned bosses like Paul Castellano. One of the things that's interesting about Domenico Cefalu is that he had many run-ins with the law before he became the Gambino family boss, but once he took on the head role, he basically fell off authority's radar. 
Even during the 2023 raid of the Gambino family, he wasn't a suspect. Very little is known about his life as a mob boss. What is known is that his underboss was Frank Cali. It was supported that Frank became acting boss in 2015, but Frank Cali's reign didn't last long. He was shot and killed on March 13, 2019. After his death, Domenico Cefalu stepped back into the role of family boss. The Genovese family has a reputation as the most powerful and influential of the five mafia families in New York. From 1931 to 1957, this family was known as the Luciano family, but when former mob boss Charles Lucky Luciano was succeeded by Vito Genovese, the family's name changed as well. It is believed that this family has hundreds of associates throughout the U.S. They are involved in various different criminal activities like loan sharking, drug trafficking, money laundering, and more. But this family is also known for having a low profile and following a strict code of silence. This is why there is very little known about their activity today. The last known official boss of the Genovese family was Vincent the Chin Gigante. He ran the Genovese family from 1981 to 2005. After his passing, very little is known to the public about this infamous family. The FBI believes that the power of this family has been in limbo since. Part of the reason behind this is that the family is known to place capos in leadership roles. Since 2016, it has been speculated that Laborio Salvatore Bellomo, also known as Laborio Barney Bellomo, has been in charge. There is speculation that Barney was handpicked by the Chin himself in 1990 when he was dealing with legal problems. Very little is known about Laborio. He was imprisoned in 2001 for money laundering and faced charges again in 2006 for racketeering. He was released from prison in 2008 and has kept a very low profile since. What's notable about Laborio Barney Bellomo is how the Genovese family has maintained power under his leadership. Most mafia families are significantly less powerful today than they were in the 20th century. Authorities have taken strong measures to crack down on organized crime in New York, but Laborio Bellomo and the Genovese family have stayed off their radar. Victor Amuso has been the Lucchese family boss since 1986. Even though he has been serving a life sentence in prison since 1992 and is in his late 80s, he's still calling the shots. At one point in history, the Lucchese family had a reputation for being the most peaceful of the five families in New York, but that changed the moment Victor Amuso became boss. He named Anthony Casso as his underboss, who is one of the deadliest hitmen in Mafia history. Throughout the late 1980s and early 1990s, Victor Amuso ran a bloody reign. He had Anthony Casso kill anyone who crossed them, it is believed that the underboss killed over 30 people himself and ordered for over 100 people to be killed. He even had two NYPD detectives killing for him. Victor Amuso was arrested in 1991 and sentenced to life in prison in 1992. He was convicted of 54 racketeering charges, which included nine murders, labor corruption, extortion, and other crimes. When Victor went down, many Lucchese members feared for their lives. Several members of the family became informants, including Anthony Casso and the acting boss, Alphonse Darko. Victor Amuso is still the head of the Lucchese family, but while he's been in prison, there have been several trusted Lucchese members who have stepped into the role of acting boss over the years. Currently, it's believed that Michael Big Mike DeSantis has been acting boss since 2017. Most mafia families avoid drawing attention to themselves at all costs. After all, the world of organized crime is very dangerous. If their activities were brought to light, it could cause a lot of problems. That's why we weren't surprised to discover that most of the Mafia family bosses of 2024 keep a very low profile. When it comes to the most discreet crime family of modern time, the Colombo family takes the title. Currently, there's no confirmed record of who the Colombo family boss is. The last official boss was Andrew Russo. Andrew Russo was acting boss in 1994 until he was convicted in 1996. During this time, Alphonse Persico took over until 2019. When Alphonse Persico went to prison, Andrew Russo took over the role of official boss. He held this position until he passed away in 2022. When Andrew Russo passed away, it's believed that Robert Little Robert D'Onofrio stepped into the role of acting boss. However, very little is known about his life and his workings with the Colombo family. One thing a lot of Mafia enthusiasts wonder is what the power dynamics of the Mafia are like today. Things have changed a lot over the past few decades. Today's Mafia bosses don't have nearly the same power or reign that previous bosses held. Some people believe that the mob bosses of today have lost the mystique that once left people infatuated with these notorious figures. Authorities have cracked down on the families, making things more challenging for them. 
Recent mafia indictments have been mild compared to some of the infamous hits that took place between the 1950s and the 1980s. Some old-timers believe that today's mafia members don't plan out kills like they did in the past. Very little is known about the influence that mafia families hold today. This is exactly how they want things. While they may keep their activities low profile, it doesn't stop people from speculating. There are theories that certain politicians are involved with the mafia, such as the 2024 presidential candidate, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie being connected to the mob. Many believe that he was only running because of these ties, but there is no solid evidence to prove any of these theories. Could politicians be connected to the mob to benefit from the bankroll? One of the most recent investigations was a crackdown on the Gambino family, which resulted in several members getting busted during a coordinated raid in November 2023. After a two-year investigation, there was a 16-count indictment against 10 defendants in New York. This investigation was a joint operation between New York and Italian law enforcement. Six other Mafia associates were arrested in Italy for related offenses. Several Mafia members faced charges for their involvement in a racketeering conspiracy, which included union crimes, violent extortion, assaults, and other crimes. One of the most dangerous acts they were charged with was a hammer assault against a dispatcher of a demolition company. The attack left him severely injured. They also allegedly embezzled from union and employee benefit plans. Organized crime has evolved over the years. While law enforcement has become better at cracking down on criminal activity, the Mafia has also gotten better at creating challenges. These crime groups have adapted to changing times and have also broadened their reach. This makes it difficult for authorities to determine how dangerous their activities are. The five Mafia families in New York are still operating, but they are a lot less powerful and feared than they were decades ago. Today's Mafia bosses prefer to keep a low profile and stay off the public's radar. The less people know about them, the less trouble they will have within their organizations. While some Mafia bosses are maintaining a quiet reign of power, others are calling the shots behind bars. Thank you for watching to the end. This wraps up today's video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Stay tuned.